last session of uh, BotConf 2015. Peter Kleisner, on Sanity, you have the floor. Thank you. So my name is Peter Kleisner. I work for Looking Class, a US company. As a programmer and security researcher, I started my own company in 2013, and they just acquired my company a few months ago. Um, I'm running VirusTrack, a sinkhole operating system, and we see a lot of infections about Celity. And Celity is a very interesting Trojan. It is very old, but it has a lot of infections. It has, um, we see about daily 2 million unique IP addresses every day. Um, it's in operation since 2003, and it's still um, actively uh, doing stuff. Um, so I'm going to jump right in. So um, Celity, they said it's, um, according to Symedec, the first samples uh, started to appear in 2003. They say uh, it's from Russia, based on the first versions. The first versions, they were sending out emails to the attackers with uh, stolen information. And there were some multiple indicators that the um, operators were originating from Russia. Um, it's very interesting botnet because um, it's very large. And there's not much coverage by antivirus companies in terms of like um, publications. There are some, very few, um, but not that many. It's very easy to detect it. It's also very easy to remove it. Um, but the thing is that most of the infections, they're active in third world countries where they don't have antivirus systems installed or they don't have operating systems uh, updates installed at all. And um, Celid is just, uh, it's like a multi-purpose botnet. The first versions, they were just like stealing stuff, uh, like the, all the logins. And now they are sending out spam and uh, installing additional malware. Um, I never observed that they would start any DDoS attacks or any banking fraud, which is uh, also, I think, part of the reason why there, was not, uh, there were not many reports about it. So they're like kind of staying of, uh, under the radar. And uh, there was no new version since like since 2011, 12, there were like no new technical um, features implemented. They're just using it. And you can watch how monthly the Celity botnet uh, shrinks and gets smaller, but it's still a lot. Um, and it has some <coughs> advanced features in it, at least for the time where it was being implemented. Um, it's, a, it's a file infector, so it infects all your executables on your machine. And if you then share any executable with anyone else, um, then it distributes. Uh, initially, it was uh, sent out in email spam as an attachment. And um, it has a peer-to-peer -peer algorithm. There are two active peer-to-peer -peer networks. They are independent from each other. The protocols of the peer-to-peer -peer botnets of those two are nearly identical. There is a network three and four. They're still active. One is a little bit bigger. The, the network three is bigger. And the difference between those two peer-to-peer -peer botnets is only the one uses RSA 1024-bit and the other one 2048 to secure the updates. Um, they, have, uh, they don't have a real CNC mechanism. What they have is they uh, supply binary updates. Um, inside the peer-to-peer -peer botnet, they exchange a list of URLs. And from those URLs, Celity downloads um, the payload, basically. And I don't have any information whether the Celity guys who developed like the the infector and the dropper, whether they also use it for their own purposes or whether they like rent it out. Um, that was not the goal of my analysis. I wanted to check out how many infections there are and get the bigger picture. And we found some very interesting things in the first versions. The, in the first versions, there were like some indicators and they intentionally left some messages in the earliest versions in 2003 and 2004. Um, and right now, yeah, we see up to 2 million. Now it's a little bit down. Um, it's because people then at some point do install AV, uh, an AV or install operating system updates or just get a new computer. And I estimate that there are about 4 million infections worldwide uh, based on the coverage. So we have a peer-to-peer -peer crawler hooked up in both peer-to-peer -peer networks, which runs 24-7 and just um, connects to every peer and asks for its peer neighbors. And then we store all that information in our database. Um, and we also track the, the domains, the actually the URL packs that are being shared inside the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, botnets, and we track them, and then we try to sinkhole them. So um, when the infected machines try to download the payload, they actually contact our server, and then we see the HTTP request, and then we see like the usage and the IP where it's coming from. Um, and I think not many people are aware of it that it's still like such a huge threat. Um, 
because when you have two million infections, you can do a lot of stuff. You could uh, DDoS entire countries if you uh, take out the internet exchange points, or you could potentially like take down some stock exchange. Um, there are definitely a lot of bottlenecks. And like I mentioned, in the past few years, there were no new technical features in it. It was just running, and they are still like pushing out those uh, URL pack updates in the P2P botnets. Um, there are now about uh, only 300,000 infections in the P2P botnets. It's interesting to mention because the operators of Celity, they probably only control about like three to five or 700,000 infections, and we see way more than them because we track all the old versions, um, even th those going back to 2003, and we still see a lot of infections of uh, very old variants. Um, so we see more set infections than operators themselves. It's an interesting fact. So this shows one of the first versions. So they were like putting in a message and um, putting in some, some version strings, which is um, good for analysis, so you can track the different versions. Um, Celity infects all executables, so when you check out virus total and some samples, you will see a lot of samples that are infected by Celity, but they're not Celity themselves. You will also see like a lot of uh, corrupted Windows files. Um, in the early versions, they, um, it, it was infecting just every single file from the, uh, also from the operating system, which is pretty annoying because then you would pretty much have to reinstall the operating system. Um, so you will come around like a lot of Windows XP infected system files on virus total. And sometimes um, you have to really be careful when you check out Celity samples. If it's really a Celity sample or just an infection or uh, antivirus company, sometimes uh, name it wrongly. So we have some interesting information about the author. Um, right now, if you want to like try to catch the guy, you can't really. There's not like a central CNC. There's only the P2P botnet where they exchange the URLs. And the URLs, they point to um, compromised legitimate websites. Um, I believe they use the stolen login information, um, like the FTP credentials of some people to upload their malicious binaries there. And um, I mean, you could potentially, maybe if you get access to the server, you could check out the logs and see who uploaded the binary. But other than that, uh, in the P2P botnet, you will not find um, the author. So Simon Tech did a really good report. Um, and this shows an email, an exfiltration email sent by um, early Celity version from 2004. And in there, there are mentioned uh, three nicknames. There's one mentioned sector, one imager, and alien set. And the interesting thing about this old version is so they sent the stolen information locally by email to the attacker. So we have three um, email addresses. And the uh, reason why it's Saladi, it's because um, they say it's from Salavat City, a city in Russia, which appears in the exfiltration emails in the subject. So we have those three nicknames, and we have the email addresses where it was being sent to. And I have some really cool, awesome slides about one guy, and I'm not showing you them for privacy reasons. Um, if you look up uh, the one email here, you will find like a, a kind of like a Russian Facebook uh, profile, a social media profile. So apparently the guy was using this email to send uh, the stolen information to and also for his social media profile. And it's still up there and it like matches everything that we know, everything that Simantech knows about the authors. I don't believe he's still active there anymore according to what he publishes on his uh, on his social media, but I believe he was probably allegedly helping them in the early days in 2003 and 4. So you find like well, when you looked it up, then you will see uh, he's also like advertising on his website SEO stuff, and he's uh, living in the Salavat city in Russia, and it was kind of interesting. And when you execute the old samples of Salady, they won't run anymore on Windows 7, so I had to execute them in Windows XP, and then it still tried to send out emails, which will not work because they um, are using the SMTP server of mail.ru. They're not authenticating there. They're not using any, um, not TLS or SSL or anything at all. So it's not successful anymore, those emails. So this is um, our infection statistics and virus tracker. Um, this is both the peer-to-peer -peer botnets, the, the data from our peer-to-peer -peer crawlers, but also um, what we see on our domain-based sinkholes. 
And the reason why it's going up so much is because we've got more coverage. And the reason why it's going down over the time is because people disinfect uh, their machine at some point and they disappear. There were some spikes um, like here that I couldn't explain. I was checking it out. So we have like, we have tons of, of domains and all together on our sinkhole we have like more than 10,000 domains and a lot of salinity. And on like here, for example, we lost about like quite a lot, like something between 50 and 100K machines from one day to the other. And I couldn't explain it. I, I don't know why those machines don't appear anymore. Um, maybe they updated uh, that specifically, like um, one part of it. And, but still, like, yeah, it's, it's going down over the time, but it's still a lot. So right now, we see about roughly 1.5 million unique IPs. And we only see a portion of it because we don't have all the main sinkhole of it. So roughly 20% we observe on the peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, we have custom peer-to-peer -peer crawlers that just run 24-7. Um, we have one running in the US, we have uh, one running in, in Prague, and it's connecting in real time to all the machines. At one point, our peer-to-peer -peer crawler was connected to one million machine that was uh, back in early 2014. And that was, was cool to see when you have like one machine connected to one million IPs. That's like when you reach the limit of like your everything, like your uh, local network, like you won't have any open TCP ports anymore or any ports. Um, you will uh, run like out of CPU and everything. So that was interesting to see. And like I mentioned, uh, most infections are like in third world countries. So top one, India, Egypt, Vietnam, Pakistan, Iran. And in countries like US or Germany, there are the, like the least infections. And that's because uh, if you just have operating system updates installed, you will be secure against it. And if you check like the salady samples on VirusTotal, they always have a, a very good coverage. Um, they, they are like detected nearly 100% nearly by every antivirus. And that's very interesting to mention. So it's very easy to remove. The, Earliest, well, the earliest version, they have a rootkit, but only for 32 bit. And it was, it's a very small rootkit, just four kilobytes. It's a driver which uh, is terminating or trying to terminate antivirus processes and also preventing network packets that contain certain strings. Um, but it's not really effective anymore. And we had over, we had in total four DDoS attacks against our sinkhole servers. So, I believe that three of them were attributed to Salady. Um, there are some indicators. So the first one was uh, one gigabit per second DDoS attack, and then just uh, a few weeks later, we were hit by a 10 gigabit per second, and then in March this year, we were hit by a 120 gigabit per second DDoS attack. And here you can see the, um, the you can see the a snapshot from the network traffic. On our single servers, we always have we see like the the infected machines coming in in waves. Um, like we see them in the night, it goes a little bit down, and then during the day a little bit up. We also see um, during the week that we see more in the most infections on Wednesday, and then um, it goes down on Saturday, and on Sunday it's the least, and then it goes up again on Monday. So based on our network traffic, I can say which day of the week it is. And here you can see the data that we got from the uh, data center on the DDoS attacks. Um, there was in the first two DDoS attacks, there was one address uh, doing a TCP DDoS, and I looked them up in our uh, database, and we found that on the same day where the DDoS was, it was a known salinity infection. This could be a coincidence, but um, it's a very strong indication that in both instances, it was infected with salinity. And salinity makes up like roughly two thirds of our data, and uh, we don't hide the fact that we're synchroning it. Like if you check, our sinkhole, our sinkhole domains, then you will see that they are registered to us. It says specifically virus tracker in the registration data. So there were four different peer-to-peer -peer networks, but only three, two of them are active, network uh, three and four. And they just uh, exchanged the peer lists, basically, inside the peer-to-peer -peer network, the neighbors, and they exchanged the UL packs where they download binaries. There's no real CNC mechanism inside it. There's like no way that the operator could uh, send a command to DDoS something or do anything. He has to just uh, push out a new executable. And basically, 
that's what we do. If you know all the URL packs, then you can try to sync all them and see about who is infected in real time. Um, it's a very simple but effective Trojan. It injects, the earth, first version was injecting into Explorer.exe. Now it's a random process. And from there on, it will just operate. It will try to contact a, a, a predefined list of IP addresses to start communicating into, into the peer-to-peer -peer network. And it will try to contact the URLs to download additional binaries to do additional stuff. Here it was uh, injecting into TCP view and analyzing it is very simple. You can just literally drop it in your VM, execute it, and then watch in uh, Wireshark and, and using some debuggers to analyze it. The peer-to-peer -peer algorithm is very flat, simple, uh, effect, but also effective. Um, it's not like complicated like the SUS game over peer-to-peer -peer algorithm. Um, they are not like master nodes, they're all like on the same level and um, there's no like distinction. The only thing is um, they keep an internal value about whether the bot uh, is a super node or not, like accessible from the outside or not. Um, here you can see it's very noisy, you can detect it easily. It's uh, literally uh, doing uh, just UDP connections to those ports which shouldn't connect to, so it's, you, it's very easy to detect both on the network, but also locally on the machine when you, uh, you can check like for the mutexes of it or you can check, um, yeah, just the network traffic locally. Or also if, you, if you're, all your files are suddenly infected. And Network 4 has uh, a second change to Network 3. It opens a TCP port to exchange files. It basically exchanges the same files that it would normally download through the URLs. So on Network 4, we don't see any new URLs being exchanged, um, rather it uses the built-in peer-to-peer method. Um, it was a, it's a little bit annoying because they re rent the TCP wheel, they open a new port for every connection, which makes no sense at all for UDP. They also have like okay responses, which um, also don't make much sense. Um, they have three very basic commands. Um, one is an announcement, just saying here I am, and then the other is uh, exchanging the peer list, and then there's also um, the, the pack exchange, the URL list, and on network four you can also exchange files. And what we did, the, the, the way we could know that all these old URL packs, like all these old versions, is my peer-to-peer -peer crawler extracts um, the URL packs that are being shared, and very often an old version is joining the peer-to-peer -peer network, and then it sends, uh, then it has still like the old URL pack from, I don't know, like, even a few years ago, and then we stored it all in the file, and then we used that as an input to sync them. Because there are many zombie infections that are around that, um, that are still infected, but they don't report to anywhere. Like, they're not connected to the peer to peer network anymore, and the, UL, the URLs, they're also out of date. So, over one year, you could see a strong decrease. Uh, last year, we saw 507. Uh, thousand total infections on the P2P -peer network by the P2P -peer crawler, and now it's like um, less than 320,000 infections on the P2P -peer network. So it's going down a lot now, and I think also partly because now they uh, in in those countries where they're infected, they're reinstalling or getting a new computer, and it's very interesting to see that there are like a lot of uh, active uh, infections, P2P -peer infections, but only like a thousand supernodes. It's, um, it's going to be very interesting. Once all the supernodes are gone, they cannot communicate with each other. Like all, most of the infections, like uh, 414,000, they are behind the net or behind the firewall. So you cannot, from the outside, you cannot contact them, but they can contact you if you have your port open. So once all the supernodes are gone, um, the peer-to-peer -peer network is kind of dead. And it, it might be interesting, you know, to go after the supernodes to at least disrupt the botnet, even though I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so this is how the URL, um, how those URLs look that are being exchanged. And it's, they always put slash logo.gif or something else, like image.gif or similar names. It's very easy to find them. Uh, if you just make a Google search, you will find tons of them. 
and that's how it looks. As basically, this is just a file uploaded. This is just a binary file, RC4 encrypted, and so it will just download it and start it. So we observed all these URL packs on our P2P crawler. Um, the newest one was 241. Uh, they just uh, just a week ago they released update 350. So they always change the URLs to new ones because uh, they get taken down and then yeah they just push out new URLs. Um, there on the network four, there was no new update for a long time uh, on the P2P network on regarding the URL packs. It has right now only two domains, uh, two URLs listed. One is SLWOCFD, which is not a valid domain, um, but you could use it in your network because it will uh, try to reach out there. So you could use it locally to check if there's any connection to that and it means there's an infection. Um, and it also goes to this IP address, but this one is also not active anymore. There are some old interesting CNC domains that look like they wouldn't be valid, but they are, like this very long domain. Um, so the actual domain of it is uh, this part here, and this is just the subdomain part, which, which is weird and interesting that they use it. And as I mentioned, you, there are some things you can use to detect, like the mutexes locally, and they like, literally didn't update the malware itself uh, in the past few years. So <coughs> when it downloads the executables, uh, it will just decrypt them um, uh, in using 1024-byte blocks and just using RC4, using GDI-plus.dll. It was reported a few times by antivirus researchers already. Still, they didn't care to change it. Um, maybe that's an indication that, they're, that they don't have uh, the developer of it anymore, but they still use the botnet. That could be the case. Or they don't want to create any noise. They want to stay on the radar. Um, so, and by just, you know, encrypting it like this, you can push out an update. So anyone could do it. So anyone could take over potentially two million infections and serve their own payload. They didn't secure that. Um, this is then, this is like how the encrypted file looks like and the decrypted one. And again, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a simple file. Um, when I was running it in my VM, it was just doing a, some spam. So nothing really too interesting. Um, the, as I mentioned, the rootkit is very simple. Um, back a few years ago, it was very effective. It's only for 32-bit. Um, won't work on 64-bit anymore. And it was, uh, it had a list of uh, antivirus vendor strings and it was uh, checking the network packets if any of those strings appear, like if Kaspersky appears and then it was dropping the packet. So if you would go to an antivirus website, or if the antivirus itself would try to update, then it would just drop all the packets of it. And they also um, yeah, killed the processes that they found. Um, they did some other uh, very uh, easy but effective things, like there are some re there's a registry key where you can basically say, um, OK, there's an antivirus installed, so then the Windows Defender won't show up. And then Windows will not, not, will not tell you, oh, you should uh, install an antivirus. Um, so they were changing these values as well. So remediation, removing it. As I mentioned, it's very simple. Just have to uh, enable Windows Update, and that's it, because Microsoft added it to the malicious software removal tool, um, which will remove it. So if you just have your Windows Update, then it, you, at least it will remove it afterwards. They released it in 2012 t together with another Trojan. And to do it on a global level, well, tell everyone to uh, enable Windows Update. Um, to do it remotely, you could uh, only go through the URL packs. You could like surf and update. Obviously, law enforcement would have to do it. Um, you could try to disrupt the peer-to-peer -peer botnet. Um, it's fairly simple. The peers, they have a value, a good count value. They, they say, OK, this peer, um, I was always communicating with this IP address, so I will continue to communicate. But there is uh, also a way around that. And as I mentioned before, if you take out the super nodes that are accessible from the outside, then you could uh, take down the entire botnet. I wanted to do a live demo of the peer-to-peer -peer crawler, but um, the, I figured it wouldn't be the best idea to do it here uh, from the Google 
IP addresses because they would be blacklisted very fast if, they, if suddenly one IP address would communicate with uh, 300,000 IPs that are all known to be bots. Um, so I'm going to upload a video later and showing how I'm doing it. And I am also uh, wrote a paper about it and have also um, some algorithms put in there and some structures that are used uh, for sending the peer-to-peer -peer messages. And I'm going to do that, yeah, publish that later. So the conclusion of, of Salad is that it's very simple, uh, a very simple bot, but very effective. Um, but I think it like uh, reached its time now because at some point also in those uh, countries they will update their operating system and then uh, Salady will be gone, hopefully. But yeah, very, very nasty, nasty stuff. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Questions? Any questions? Yeah. Over there. Yeah. Hi, Chris uh, from CrowdStrike. So in 2013, there was a paper published, peer to pwned at IEEE Security and Privacy, outlining the, uh, or measuring the population of all the peer-to-peer uh, -peer botnets out there. And um, as part of that research, we measured about 900,000 peers or no, IP addresses for, for Sality. Now, I don't really understand. What's your justification of claiming that there might be 4 million infections for right, Sality because, yeah. out there? Based on the coverage of the URL packs. So we don't have all the URL packs. Um, if we go back a few slides, then we can see that. Right, so we only like have these URL packs and they update them like every few weeks. And um, if there's like a machine and it's uh, not connecting to the internet, let's say for, I don't know, two, three, four weeks, then it might not be able to communicate with the peer to peer botnet anymore because the IP addresses they changed already or not the infections are not active. So it will just stick to the one URL pack, to the old one, and it will not update the URL pack. And so it's like not part of the peer to peer botnet anymore. So it's uh, still an active infection, just not communicating anymore <coughs> with the peer to peer botnet. So, and we only see these URL packs, and there are like many missing. So that's why I estimate that we only see. Um, about half of it. Mm -hmm. okay. And there are like also old versions. There are also some versions that I couldn't sync hold because um, other security companies have them sync hold. Hi, um, Martijn, Virus Bulletin. Uh, that was a good presentation, thank you. Um, you've given some hints that, that vigilante security researchers could, could take down, uh, and perhaps they've tried to, but I'm wondering, this sounds also interesting for other cyber criminals. I mean, there's a botnet that's relatively easy to take over. Have you seen any, any activity from other malware groups that think, hey, I can have a few hundred thousand machines in Egypt and Vietnam? No, I never saw that because uh, I think most criminals don't realize that. Um, the times where I saw that they tried to take over other bots was only like for rats and smaller stuff. Um, criminals doing something like on this large scale, they will like create their own botnet. They don't typically bother about other botnets. They will not do like research typically. And no, we haven't seen any activity of anyone trying to take it over and use it for their own purpose. I think they would rather try to reach out to them and you know, tell them, hey, um, please run my bot on yours and I'll pay you. That's a more realistic scenario, I think. Thanks. One question over here. First of all, thanks, about, especially about the remediation uh, notes. Uh, do you have any insights on, on the development process of Sality? When was the last uh, version update was observed? Um, so I believe the like, last version was in two, from 2011. So it's old. Yeah, it's old. Why then? Why, why, why like do you think the last, then? The, the last change was just the network 4 of the peer-to-peer -peer network. Yeah, so it's like six, six years yeah, old. Yeah. Why then it's still alive? Yeah, um, because no one really cares about it. And <gasps> That's my next question. 
probably the stupidest question of the whole bot conf. What bad does it do? Well, Why so is it evil? It corrupts your executables, a lot of them. Um, it tries to infect them, so that sucks. So they cannot run after that? And uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of them then will fail to run. Um, but also, it uh, at least early versions were stealing all the logins locally and and sending it to the attacker in the earliest version. Um, mm -hmm. Now it's sending out spam and potentially doing other stuff like stealing your logins and. The, yeah. Okay. 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 Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? No more questions? One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.